On this one, we're just going to go straight to slope intercept form. So my y intercept would be 500. What's my rate of change? What's my slope? Negative 50. So it would be v equals negative 50t plus 500. Okay, use the formula that they give you in that case. So this sort of situation could be representing a tank that is draining. Um, your rate of change would be your y-intercept. Also, if you had points in here that it crossed, could you use a rate of change through that as well? Like if you had, if you knew specific points, could you do rise over run? Yeah, you can do that. So finding a rate of change, finding a formula for the line, and stating to interpret. The intercepts. That sort of that's going to be a situation that you will see on Monday. That'll be on Monday's part. What else? And I am recording this. I'll send it to you all so you can go back and watch this as well. Okay. <laughs> I know this is going to be a little bit quick with some of this, but. This is some of your study. Yes, Cassandra, go ahead. Converting verbal expressions algebraic. So we have to tap our algebra one skills. Let me see if I can find. I'm not sure if we're going to really review this. This is so, you've done, been doing this for so many years. It's just one of the, should be hopefully easier ones at the beginning of the test just to get, get you going. Um, I'll make one up. So what that is, um, five less than three times a number oh, I sure can. Five less than three times a number equals the sum of the square of the number, number and two. Sorry, a little messy there. Five less than three times a number equals the sum of the square of the number and two. And it's just going to say convert to algebra. <laughs> convert to math. Write an equation. Got it. <laughs> so five less than, okay, I do like the putting the less than in there because that's the kind of the hardest one because five less than is not five minus this, it's this minus five. So five less than three times a number would be three times a number minus five equals the sum, sum is means we're going to be adding, the square of the number, so x squared is not square root, it's the square, and 2, so you're adding 2, the sum of the square of the number and 2. You don't have to solve it, you don't have to do anything else, you just have to write that down. Sure. We do know how to solve part of those, I'm not sure if they're all, if it's going to be factorable. Give it a shot, give some extra credit if you get it. Yes. Nope. 
Good question. Actually, that's a very good question. Uh, five less than Y is in it. This sign right here. Yeah. Okay. This is an inequality sign, which means it still shows the relationship between two numbers, the size of the two numbers. So this falls into the category of an e equal. Like you know, when you have equal, you have to have a word equals or is. So if I say five is less than a number. If that word is less than is there, then it's 5 is less than a number. So the fact that it's just less than means it's you're subtracting or taking away. It's not is less than, equal less than. So that's what you're looking for for when you put that. Very good question, Christian. Is that easier than what you thought? <laughs> Um, I want to review with all of you solving absolute value equations. This is something, whether you remember it or not, you did do an algebra one, but usually it goes by pretty quick. There will be two answers to these. These are some things that are pretty early on. Just want to review. Um, what's the absolute value of five? What's the absolute value of negative five? So if the equation is the absolute value of x equals five, what two numbers could I put in there that the absolute value would equal positive five? Okay. You see how you have two numbers here. You could plug either 5 in there, or you could plug negative 5 in there, and you get positive 5, right? So x equals 5 or negative 5. So what you'll see in the equa equation, it's, it could be a lot compli more complicated, but we're going to go with this one. Um, absolute value of x minus 2 equals 8. So I have an expression on the inside. I have an expression on the inside. So the absolute value of what number would equal 8? Don't even think about this. Absolute value of what would equal 8? Eight? 8 or negative 8. So you make two equations. You have x minus 2. That inside could be a positive 8. Or the inside could be a negative 8. So you solve both of those. You get x equals 10 or x equals negative 6. So you get your two answers that way. If you want more of those, you can go to page 30. Three talks is absolute value. Okay. But just remember, two answers when you see an absolute value like that. There will be some others just solving equations, multi-step solving equations. Okay. So just so you know, that's on there too. Um, that's what we do all the time, though. So. Hopefully those cross multiply and divide. 5 over 4x equals 7 over 8. Could you solve that? This is division. How do I get these to the other side? Cross multiply. So 5 times 8 equals 4x times 7. So 40 equals 28x. Divide by 28. x would be 10 sevenths. What's the difference between simplify and solve? It's 
very true, Eddie. Solve means solve it. Correct. Solving means you're doing an equal sign. Simplify just means you get it down to simplest terms. Okay. There's nothing else you can combine together. Okay. So if there's an equal sign, your answer should be x equals or b equals or t equals this number. It just says simplify, you reduce it. You may have to do this some distributive property. Um, that line, a couple of you asked this on Ready, um, on Chapter 1, solve and graph a compound inequality. It'll be like this, something like this. Um, So compound inequality, compound inequalities are when you have two or more inequalities joined together. So 4 is less than 2x plus 6, which is less than 20. So just like we need to solve, right, so we're going to use our solving skills. Here's my x. So if I'm solving for x, what do I have to do first, divide by 2 or minus 6? Minus the 6. Now, how many sides do I have here? I have a number on the left. I also have a number on the right. So if I'm minus 6, I'm going to minus 6 from everything. The middle cancels off. I get negative 2 is less than 2x, which is less than 14. And now I have to divide everything by 2. I get negative 1 is less than x, which is less than 7. So that's the solving. We've solved it. x has to be between negative 1 and 7, between them, because it's between them. So it has to be between them. So graphing that, if you remember, graphing that happens on the number line. Open or close circles? Open, and you're going to shade in between them. Remember doing that? Shading on the number line. There are some more of those on page. the number then you do close circle. Page 45 there's some more. Make sure your e questions look like this to begin with. Questions that don't look like that um, uh, give you the hint the question will look like that. So things that look differently you don't have to worry about that. Okay? Yes. And Christian what's your question? Uh, we use our calculator for that, just that, and I, that will not be on the final, so I won't go over that again. Okay, so the question was drawing an absolute value graph. What? Remember the general shape of absolute value? V. So that is the V with the hard point. It's not a parabola, it's not a curve, it's the V with the hard point. So if we have... Let's say f of x equals absolute value of x plus 2. 